Hey guys, so when I make a YouTube video, you guys don't normally see my face. For this YouTube video, you're going to see my face. If you are going to change the front drive shaft on your Dodge Charger, Dodge Magnum, Chrysler 300, uh, maybe even the all-wheel drive Challenger, I'm not sure about that one, uh, you don't want to do what I did, because it will result in this, or worse yet, death. Alright, so when you're underneath your Dodge Charger, Magnum, Chrysler 300 with all-wheel drive, you see a rear drive shaft, a rear end, you see a transfer case, and you see a front drive shaft, and, you know, a front end, like a front axle with independent suspension, um, I assumed that if I were to take the front drive shaft off, that because the rear tires were planted to the ground, that the transmission would still stay in park, and uh, the car would not move. I assumed it was like any other vehicle that has a transfer case, and that's when I made the fatal mistake. Uh... This is not a part-time four-wheel drive system. This is like an like an all-wheel drive system. It, it works all the time. And there are things inside of it that are different than what I was used to working on. Uh, I'm an engineer. Uh, I want to pretend like I'm a pretty practical problem solver. Uh, and I want to... And I can say with confidence that I know how a lot of stuff works under the hood of the car. Uh, but the hard lesson learned here was, is that I don't know everything underneath the hood of a car, uh, and that I took safety for granted. I got lucky. Uh, the car was rolling off the wheel ramps and I got pinched in between the engine compartment and the ground. And uh, I stayed in one place as the car went out of my driveway, I'm sorry, out of my garage, down my driveway, and into my neighbor's front yard. Uh, if I were maybe six inches or a foot further underneath that car, uh, the car would have grabbed my shoulder or my head. It would have pulled me out of my garage. It would have pulled me down my driveway, across the street, over a curb, and uh, into the tree in my neighbor's yard. I got lucky. Um... So I've been talking for a couple minutes now. I'm just going to say this. the When your car is in park on the Dodge Charger, Chrysler 300, uh, Dodge Magnum wagon, the front drive shaft may be the only thing that is holding the car when it's in, like, when the, when the, when the shifter is in the park mode. Uh, either that or the front and the rear and uh, fight each other within this transfer case that I don't understand how it works. And if you take one away, and in my particular situation, I took the front drive shaft away, and now there was nothing fighting, you know, relative motion inside the transfer case, uh, the car was no longer in park and was able to move freely. So uh, stay tuned. I'm going to draw a little picture. It'll explain better what happened. And you don't want to do this if you're going to work on your front drive shaft on one of these cars. All right, I love YouTube. Um, I love YouTube because I can see people doing things and I can very quickly learn, I don't know, basic skills to some subject matter that I'm not familiar with. Uh, but most importantly, I love YouTube because when my car breaks, I can find the video out there of someone that fixed the same problem that I have. And I get to see what they did right, what they did wrong. I get to learn from them before I learn on my own vehicle. Uh, so I want to, I want to do the same for all you. All right. Uh, I want you guys to learn from this mistake, and hopefully you won't make it because I don't want any of you all out there to get hurt. Um, all right. So this is the front of the car, and I had the car up on wheel ramps. I had. A 2 by 4 here, and I had a brick behind the, the other back wheel. 
Um, the parking brake didn't work in this car, uh, and the car was in park when I'm about to explain what happened. Um, so anyways, I was able to get maybe most of the fasteners off of the front drive shaft hiding underneath the car on the wheel ramps. But then in order to get the last couple bolts out of the drive shaft in the area that I could not reach, what I ended up doing is I ended up backing the car off the wheel ramps a little bit. That tire moved back there. I re the wheels again with a 2x4 and with a brick on both sides. Um, and when I got the second to last bolt out of the drive shaft, the car no longer was in park. The parking brake wasn't on. The brick on one tire and the 2x4 on the other tire weren't tall enough to overcome the force that the car had going down that wheel ramp. And the car slid down the wheel ramp and out of my driveway, or out of my garage, down my driveway, across the street, into my neighbor's yard. As was going down the ramp, my head got stuck in between the engine compartment, something big, heavy, and metal, uh, and the ground. So, don't do this. Get the car up, all four wheels up, uh, if you're going to do this. If you have to do it this way, because a lot of us have to do what we got to do with the tools that we have on hand, you know, whatever's in our garage, make sure that whatever device that you use to keep your car from moving is significant and adequate enough in order to do the job. The brick and the 2x4 were not adequate. I never in a million years thought this would happen to me, and I kind of like... I didn't laugh as I put the brick and the 2 by 4 on the ground, but I kind of felt like I was doing it just for the, you know, sake of doing it. Uh, and I never thought I would actually have to utilize them. Um, yeah, that's all I really want to say. Uh, if this was a truck, which it's not, if I were to take the front drive shaft off when the car is in park, it's going to still lock up the real the rear wheels. But because this was like a full-time transfer case, all-wheel drive car, it didn't work that way. I thought I was smart. I thought I understood what I was working on. I didn't. Even if I didn't understand what I was working on, if I was to kind of play out the worst-case scenario in my head and then take the appropriate safety measures, what happened to me last night would not have happened to me and I would have been successfully able to change the drive shaft. Um, now my face is all messed up. I'm hoping that after it's all healed up, I won't have any scarring. Uh, and the car, it's done like it's toast. The, the drive shaft was flying around and it destroyed the rack and pinion steering, uh, transmission cooler lines. It tore up a wiring harness, a bunch of sensors underneath the car. And the car has 300,000 miles on it. it. It's not worth putting the money into that car to get it back on the road. So uh, my fatal mistake was right here. And my fatal mistake was thinking that I knew things that I really didn't know. Um, and now I need to get another car. And uh, I need to go through some uncomfortable soreness while I heal up. Uh, thank you all for the YouTube videos that show people how to do it right. Uh... <laughs> Later, guys. All right, so this is what I was trying to fix. Uh, there was uh, a bad U-joint in my front drive shaft. It started off as a squeak. Uh, I'm actually going to put a link in the description of someone else to put a video up here on YouTube uh, that the squeak in his car sounded identical to mine. And then it kind of turned into like this clunking sound whenever I would down whenever the car was downshifting as I was slowing to a stop um and then when I was kind of pulling it out of park in the driveway you could kind of hear like metal clacking around it uh through like a hollow cylinder which was the front drive shaft um so that was the problem that I was attempting to fix